So this video, I just want to make a kind of simplified um, video for lay people or people new to mold avoidance concepts about um, Eric Johnson's theory on why mold got worse, uh, mold combining with chemicals and nanoparticles, um, and um, about what the scientific literature says on that and why I personally f found it plausible. So, um, the thing about mold avoidance is that everyone in the mold avoidance world is going by experience and intuition to a certain extent, although some of the concepts are counterintuitive. And on others' experience, um, like those who have been uh, very successful in healing, um, so listening to sort of mentors. And so um, we use a lot of shorthand um, and a lot of words that don't mean exactly um, something exactly scientific. So we say mold, um, even though we're not avoiding all molds, just the ones that are really pathogenic, and even though we don't 100% know that what we're avoiding is just regular mold or just mold. Um, and in fact, if you look at where people tend to do well, like on a map or something, um, or just based on like thousands or even maybe at this point tens of thousands of reports, um, it's not just like wet versus dry. I mean, people say the desert, but people do well in tropical rainforests or temperate rainforests, um, uh, high desert, low desert, um, and generally like just wilderness areas that are really far from civilization. Oh, also like some of the ocean waters in the Caribbean and some of the beaches there. So it's not as like all of those temperate rainforests and even the deserts to some extent have mold spores have regular mold mold is something that's really natural um that's been around for hundreds of thousands of years so why did everyone start getting sick from it and that's where eric's theory comes in um when i first read eric's ideas about mold combining with nanoparticles to make it way more pathogenic sometime in the 80s. I, I at first thought this is a little far-fetched and the reason I came to believe it is partially because I think you need um, a theory to explain why mold became more pathogenic because it's apparent to almost everyone in the community that it got worse and that that explains the explosion of illnesses related to mold um, around the 70s, 80s, and exponentially increasing now. Um, so, and it also explains why it's not just um, regular mold that people need to avoid, but areas that are often um, related to heavy industry or agriculture. Um, and then I also read a little bit of the scientific literature and Eric had provided a few links, but I found some other links like this very recent PNAS article in 2018. Um, if you don't know, PNAS is considered a high impact, very respected journal. Um, and High impact means that it's cited a lot and res and it's uh, a measure that people respect if uh, a high impact journal is considered a serious journal. Um, and this PNAS article specifically stated that um, not only do nanoparticles uh, combine with mold spores, they sort of aggregate on the tips of the um, 
they're called fungal hyphae, um, that they found that A, this happens in the wild, meaning they found samples of these molds at construction sites that were coated with nanoparticles. So it's not just something that happened in the lab. This actually is relevant to the way mold acts in the real world. Um, that they found that these nanoparticle coated fungal spores um, were induced a more inflammatory immune response um, in mice. So it's a very complex article and I recommend reading the full text if you can. But basically this confirmed exactly what Eric's saying and like I said before, it kind of explains or would explain, and I think we still need more research, why um, mold became more pathogenic. Now what I think, I'll put a bunch of links in the comments section, but what I think um, is really important about all this is that um, if Eric's right, this will and is getting all exponentially worse and there will be few places left where people feel um, good.